we curse? Yeah. No. Fuck yeah. No, not in front of me, please. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I've, I've, I'm sensitive to doing interviews with Jake. <laughs> Oh, I because always curse when yeah, I'm not supposed to. I, yeah. <laughs> Have you been going on Jake's off. show? I've I've randomly swooped in a few times. It's been well over a year since I was on the radio. Well, it's just like whenever like they're just like chilling, and I just like call in, and we just get weird for like an hour. Mm. Yeah, the phones have been broken because the University of Iowa just upgraded to Skype phones, which are incompatible with all of our shit. Mm. Um, and, like, literally for no reason. Cool. Why would you invest in a landline cool. in 2021? Go Hawks. The university spent probably tens of thousands of dollars getting Skype phones. We don't even use... Who's using Skype? Yeah, no We're one. We're all on Zoom now. Yeah. yeah, we spent a whole year on Zoom. <laughs> It makes no sense, but that's I'm where sure we're some at. like some provost's nephew is like a third tier CFO for Skype or some nonsense. That's my, my guess. nephew's been going door to door selling these amazing telephones. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to introduce the show now. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome to I Hear I See Radio. This is episode 118. This is a show mostly about music, mostly centered in Iowa City, Iowa. So that means most of the time it involves artists that live in Iowa City or used to live in Iowa City or have some connection to me or have some reason to be on the show, whatever. I've been doing the show since October 2017, and this is an offshoot of the I Hear I See concert series, which I believe began in 2009. I think it was 2009. Before I lived here. Obviously, that's been on hold for over a year now. So this is all we've got is this audio program. And my audio is clipping. I'll be more careful. Uh, Tonight, I have three guests. It's also a very stormy night. So I have a window open behind me. We may see some lightning flashing. That'll be interesting for the people watching the video, which you can see exclusively at patreon.com slash I hear I see back to what I was already saying. We have three guests tonight. We've got Jake Jones. Jake is smiling for those of you who are only listening was to the I audio. Was I supposed to say my catchphrase? Uh, yeah. What is your catchphrase? Uh, I just love deluxe's donuts. <laughs> Thanks for that. <laughs> uh, and we've got, uh, let's introduce Gabby next. We've got Gabby Vanek. Cha, brah. <laughs> Very good. And we've got Will Yeager. Hi. That is Will's catchphrase. It's taking the nation by storm. <laughs> I really wanted to scream Mortal Kombat because I just read this interview, but I was afraid that if I screamed it, it would just like clip like crazy and ruin everything. Yeah. We got to be very cautious with our audio, apparently. Um, so I'm probably going to scream it randomly later. Yeah. Well, tr- if you turn your head away from the mic, that will help, I think, in the to editing process. <laughs> okay. Okay. Thank you, Justin. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, all three of you have been on this program in the past. You are veterans of the I Hear I See Super Soldier program. I'm wearing a Captain America shirt also. Um, <laughs> big, big shout out to uh, Jordan Peterson, the new Red Skull. <laughs> <laughs> I have not read anything about that, but I did see it was trending on Twitter. I just saw like a couple of screenshots. It's <laughs> it's as good as you would imagine. What is this about? What are you talking about? I know who Red Skull is. Is this just a new meme or is this a real thing? Well, apparently Red Skull in the new Captain America comic is influenced or inspired by uh, the teachings of Professor Jordan B. Peterson. That rule. <laughs> <laughs> That's so cool. Canada's own. It, yeah, he's like, just... Red Skull's whole thing is that he's worse than Nazis. Mm-hmm. Right? Like, Am I missing? We don't. Let's no, not. That's, that's, <laughs> I mean, I would love to just talk about comics. I feel like I feel like we've got. I don't know actually. It, I don't actually know a whole lot about the Red Skull lore. Does anyone? 
Sklor, I think, is the... Uh... <laughs> Red Sklor. <laughs> <laughs> I have been reading... Sklor uh... is also a band from Iowa City. Is that a joke or real? It's a joke. Okay. <laughs> but it'd be good. It'd be a good band name. Yeah. Would they be thrash? Would they be black metal? Are there a lot of black metal bands around here? Actually, yeah. So there's Dryad. Well, there used to be Nethervoid was like another one that came out. I have their album somewhere. That was like quite a few years ago. I don't know if they're still doing much. Um, that was the the big one. And there's well, Closet Witch is more of grindcore, aren't they? So. Hmm. I honestly am pretty ignorant even to like metal subgenres. What is what makes black metal black metal? I didn't expect to be catered I it was to the in this costumes. way. It's <laughs> right. the outfits, aren't they? Like most distinctions in the metal uh, cinematic universe is it deals with costuming, is my understanding. Well, the big thing with black metal, aside from like timbrely, it's a lot different. Like you could get like a lot more screechy. Mm-hmm. Uh, is lyrical content like is ex- like it's usually like explicitly more anti-religious but then like there's like this whole like nsbm offshoot that like right. is really <laughs> prevalent for some reason and, and that, i don't want to give it to be a, a little political right <laughs> um, and just just a bit <laughs> the ns that stands for national socialist yeah that's what i was thinking yeah um but specifically with black metal that's like always like like there's not nsdm like it's not really a thing I mean, they're Nazis in death metal, but they're Nazis in, like, everything. Is NSDM <laughs> National Socialist Dance Music? <laughs> <laughs> it's just, that's, God damn it. Yeah, like... E- <laughs> that's what I thought. Like EDM. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Or IDM. Right. Are y'all familiar? Yeah, in- intelligent, intelligent dance, dance, dance music. <laughs> <laughs> intelligent dance music. Which I think just means that it's not all in 4-4, right? My under- I-, I had a roommate who liked... IDM and use that word and I think he just used it to distinguish himself from people who like dubstep in Oklahoma City Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so that was the main use of it it's like I like electronic music but I don't like to have fun I think that's what it means (laughs) (laughs) no drugs absolutely right out (laughs) so I've gathered the three of you here tonight to hype up an upcoming video release uh, we recorded something at Gabe's, jeez, oh, how long ago was that now? Three weeks? I don't even remember when it was. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that sounds right. But we recorded a performance at Gabe's, uh, as part of the, uh-oh, we lost Will. <laughs> well, hopefully Will will be back. Bye. <laughs> We recorded a video at Gabe's uh, to premiere season two of the No Touching Sessions series, which is uh, Crystal Sherman's joint from uh, last summer, part of her uh, pandemic activities. I think we are the 23rd in the series. It's Wow. It, yeah, she's been doing quite a few of That's them. That's amazing. Yeah. In fact, I should have brought this up before I started talking. But uh, I believe this, yeah, this will premiere on April 15th at 8 p.m. Central. It is entirely free. It'll be streaming live on this Facebook event, and then it'll be up on YouTube following that. Uh, So I'll put that up in the episode description, of course, but I thought we could maybe talk about it a little bit. Uh, The band name for this collection of people is a name I've wanted to use for many years now. We're going by The Unblessed Rest of Us. And I think I told you early on that this is a phrase that I was borrowing from a John Oswald essay. And did any of you have any idea what I was talking about when I said that? Uh, No, I actually don't remember you saying that. I feel like it's really easy to understand why that name would be attractive right now in this moment. Mm -hmm. Um, What was John Oswald writing about? Yeah, so John Oswald, he... Can I guess? Sure, yeah. Uh, um, Occupy. Uh, No, it's actually quite a bit older than that. Gabby, do you know who John Oswald is? No, I'm like showing my ignorance here. 
Well, I, I no one seems to talk about him much besides me. Um, <laughs> but he coined the phrase or the term plunder phonics. So the idea of uh, obviously he wasn't the first to do this, but he made up this word for it, uh, sampling other people's work to create your own musical compositions. And he wrote an essay that he presented at the Wired Society Electroacoustic Conference in Toronto in 1985 to kind of uh, justify what he was doing and kind of explain the ethos behind plunder phonics. And I could read from it, but let me just get the uh, the phrase unblessed rest of us out of the way. Uh, so he was talking about how composers, they can either <laughs> pretend that they are just gifted with this divine inspiration to create music, or they can be honest and acknowledge that they are influenced by everything that's going on around them, all of the music that they've experienced and listened to prior to their own creations. Uh, And I'll just read the paragraph that I took, I lifted this phrase from. Can the sounding materials that inspire composition be sometimes considered compositions themselves? Uh, And when he says sounding materials, he means in terms of uh, sound like music, not like the, you know, sounding. You guys know what sounding is? Oh, God. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, this is an after dark episode, I see. This isn't usually that kind of show, but you know, we're on Zoom. We're not on we're not broadcasting on the radio. Just, Justin, you don't have to impress me with all of this uh <laughs> la- all of this language. I don't know what any of it means. Do you know what's... what is sounding? Is sounding just like uh a word you- is it a porn thing or is it an academic thing? Well, a little bit of both. <laughs> sure, it can mean more than one thing. In this case, my, can I guess what it is? Yeah, yeah. Well, let's At, do that with was everything. The, w- was there a point where people were saying soundings to describe their sound work? <laughs> Out sick. Like, would you like to listen to my collection of soundings <laughs> instead of saying songs it, or compositions? Not that I'm aware of, but I wouldn't be surprised if people have said that before. In the case of in the context of this essay he means sounding materials as in like the creation of sound materials that go into a a piece of music and uh will says his internet died so we'll see if he joins us uh as we continue this discussion the other meaning will be a rolling thing shit (laughs) the other meaning of sounding is much more explicit well what is it don't leave us in the dark here. The name of the conference you name dropped earlier sounded incredibly sexy. So I'm just like, <laughs> let's keep going. Yeah. Uh, okay. Sounding is in, it's a sexual act in which you insert objects into the u- urethra of the penis. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you asked me a moment ago, what is that called? I swear I would have had an answer for you that wasn't that, Uh-oh. but for the life of me, I can't, I don't know what it's called. We just overwrote Sounding. Jake's memory. <laughs> Sounding. This is the Mandela effect. <laughs> yeah. I. That's really cool. I'm going to include that in my PowerPoint when I'm teaching sound. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And this is usually, you know, not an area of study that we get into on I Hear I See Radio, but we're learning all kinds of things tonight. Uh, So back to the words of John Oswald. (laughs) (laughs) Can the sounding materials that inspire composition be sometimes considered compositions themselves? Is the piano the musical creation of Bartolomeo Cristofori, who lived from 1655 to 1731, or merely the vehicle engineered by him for Ludwig von and others to maneuver through their musical territory. And Will has joined us now in the middle of this very (laughs) academic reading. God, Will, Justin won't stop fucking (laughs) reading. It's so boring. Send me in, coach. Send me in. (laughs) (laughs) Just all this nerd shit about sound and uh, acoustics. Eventually, though, I get to the very cool (laughs) wordplay. Yeah, no, please. I'm sorry. I'm joking. Please continue. 
Some memorable compositions were created specifically for the digital recorder of that era, the music box. Are the preset sounds in today's sequencers and synthesizers free samples or the musical property of the manufacturer? And keep in mind, this was presented in 1985, so we're talking 1985 tech. Is a timbre any less definably possessible than a melody? A composer who claims divine inspiration is perhaps exempt from responsibility to this inventory of the layers of authorship, but what about the unblessed rest of us? And so that's where I took that phrase for the name of a band. Okay, that's cool. I like hearing that. I thought it, I mean, I, yeah. I, I think for those uninitiated, it definitely conjures like very clear political uh, connotations. Yeah. Like, um, but I really, I don't know, that is really interesting. And what is the source, Justin? Uh, this is from the John Oswald essay, Plunder Phonics or Audio Piracy as a Compositional Prerogative. Hell yeah. I was getting some like art in the age of mechanical reproduction vibes in there too. Yeah, yeah. Uh so Oh yeah, let's let's go. <laughs> ben- Benjamin Adorno. Oh man. Let's just that... make Jake cry. Yeah. Remember Adorno memes? I feel like that also, was like Also anybody who listens to this cry because <laughs> give me for, you know. I mean, I Frankfurt school or give me please give me death. <laughs> I think I have some Adorno readings. On my desk over yeah, here. Yeah, bring, bring it out, Gabby, because I, right, I, well, I don't know a whole lot of Adorno. So let's. <laughs> Should I go get my philosophy and the aesthetics of music textbook? Oh, oh okay. This is, uh, we're just going to read a bunch of stuff. This is a good way to hype up our video releases to <laughs> just yeah, hold re- on. read a bunch of academic texts and bore the hell out of people. Though I feel like yeah. Luigi Russolo is like definitely worth talking about. I'm going to, I'll bring some balance with my book Fascist. of Tony Conrad writings. <laughs> what do you think about that? Yeah, let's hear it. Uh, yeah that was that was a big that was a sad moment when i realized all the futurists are also like unrepentant fascists yeah that's do love. a big thing yes early how do we words. contend with that but it's also like all of our idols are complete failures <laughs> and horrible and flawed you know i just want I just want to draw everybody's attention to the title of this tony conrad oh, essay mm-hmm. for, for Here, those yeah for those who are not uh, foe. Yeah, if you're not watching the video, you're only hearing us. Will just held up a page that said, Theory, the people's foe. <laughs> uh, so, what? yeah, what does that mean? If you. Theory's boring. <laughs> it's fucking boring and hard. I say, knowing that obviously it's more complicated than that. It's just different. I don't know. I don't know. Yeah, uh, people don't want to read. When I say people, I mean me. I don't want to read a bunch of academic texts. That's why I finished my master's degree and never looked back. <laughs> it, it. I mean, it's just difficult because I, I'm like having uh, flashbacks of like reading Reddit threads on leftist subreddits of like people being like, you can't say theories hard because like if you, you know, look at Ho Chi Minh and Vietnam, like like literally teaching people how to read, like teaching literacy through Marx's capital Mm -hmm. and like all these other like, you know, state and revolution and and what we would, I mean, different kind of theory, but Mm. I mean, it's, you know, but we have like phones. (laughs) 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 We have like games and stuff. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> and we're in the imperial we're in the evil imperialist like core of the planet well uh, so who needs like, who needs like um who needs the academy when you've got you know instagram posts you know slides story po- you know story posts yeah. yeah that's where i get all my information <laughs> i um, am s- i am exclusively from um astrology instagram accounts <laughs> I am citing a friend's Instagram story in my master's thesis. No kidding. This round. Wow. Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. With their at and everything. Um, Is, does that, does that have precedent? Are you the first to do that? Surely. Yeah, I mean. I'm not. I'm sure you're not. No, surely yeah. I'm not. Right, right, right. Yeah, I yeah. mean, 
media studies is like a field. Like there's someone who's gotten their masters just like looking through a celebrity's tweets. <laughs> so I mean, there's. I say that like there's not gonna be like thousands of citations of Trump's Twitter oh, account. Oh, for sure. In yeah. The next, I ha- already, but in the next, you know. I was just thinking 10, that like everybody years. in Rock Hard Caucus should get like an honorary doctorate then. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, can I get a degree if I read enough opinion pieces in local newspapers? <laughs> An honorary PhD in in American studies. American studies. In American, American studies. studies. Yeah, yeah that makes yeah. sense. I'm very specialized to like a group of like three or four weird guys. <laughs> uh, okay, yeah. Let's let's not read anymore because I think that was a bad idea. Um, <laughs> I was actually talk... kind of excited. Well, no, I mean, you've got the book in front of you. So no, if it's, you... It's, it's, it's too late. If you found something good, Gabby, <laughs> no, you can close out the reading segment of today's episode. <laughs> no, it's okay. I mean, there's some Brian Eno in here, too. Like, th- this whole thing is, this is a wild ride, this book. Eno tends to be pretty readable. He's not, like, all lofty and academic. Perhaps. What I've seen, anyway. Instead, let's just talk about uh, music, I guess. So when we played this show at Gabe's, I was playing a guitar, and I had a mixer, and I had a effects pedal. It sounded so funny when you had said the words out loud, I was playing a guitar. <laughs> what's what's so funny about it? I don't know. It just sounded like I was playing a guitar. Like, you're like embarrassed. I'm ashamed to play a guitar. ashamed to be like, I played guitar at Gabe's. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah. uh, so I had the guitar, I have a mixer, I've got uh, a Zoom effects pedal hooked up to the mixer, and then I have a radio, and the radio is kind of my connection, in my mind at least, to the tradition of plunderphonics. Like, at some point, I will be incorporating the work of others in what I'm going to be performing here. I'm going to turn the radio on, pull something out of the air, however the radio waves work. <laughs> Mm-hmm. And, and then that'll be filtered through us. And then I also had a mic, or no, I had a, I was pulling from Will's amp and then I had a mic on Jake so I could run both of you through my effects pedal as well. Because that was, that was to me a big part of the idea was like, I want to have some mixing control myself. I want to be directing at least like one segment of this. And then we had Gabby playing a bunch of pedals. <laughs> <laughs> Gabby, you your setup is the one I really know the least about, even though I've played with you playing those same pedals many times. I mean, I kind of like being shrouded in mystery, but Those, like she yeah. likes it that way. <laughs> yeah. But I can I can tell you as much as you want to know about it, but I I took um an out from Will's bass too. So I was right. doing no input plus bass. Right, um, so we were we were both stealing a piece of Will's soul and shoving it through our technological manipulation. I, would, <laughs> I wouldn't have it any other way. <laughs> now, I love the idea of your setups becoming like horcruxes for me or something. like <laughs> Trapped in the delay pedal. I'm thinking yes. about the, the concept of being photographed as stealing the soul does the same yeah. does the same apply to an audio recording if so i've got nothing left i'm i've completely sapped all of my soul <laughs> we are but husks <laughs> yeah seriously well i'm thinking about just kind of what you you know riffing on this idea of plunder phonics like something i don't know something's interesting to me about um you you um you know your piratical actions happening like kind of on multiple levels both through the radio and also um grabbing from from me and jake i actually hadn't right, even because... made that connection like i'm also stealing from the people that are on stage with me <laughs> yeah so there's just something interesting to me about like i don't know um there's like meta reality is at play or something. Um, Rot row. 
I think we are possibly losing. Let me Will talk again, about what I think is interesting. <laughs> yeah, Ooh, tell yeah. us what you think is interesting. Oh, yeah. oh wait. Oh, there you go. There's Will. You, you cut out for a second. We lost part of what I'm sure was very eloquent. It's because you stole some of his soul. Well, Jake, oh, tell us what you think is interesting. <laughs> yeah, so what I think is much more interesting than what Will thinks is interesting, and that is um, that as a cohort, as like a collective, we are a mixer. And so like, I think it's really interesting that you're using no input mixing and like, <clears throat> if we like really expand that definition and thinking about the collective of like generating sound. And I, I don't know, I think that could be really interesting. Will, are you back? I can't tell. Will just interrupt me. <laughs> he just texted he us that his. He so sad. I know. I, f- I feel bad that he's being cut out, but it's it's his internet's fault. He did just yeah. text us that his connection is awful. Yeah. Oh, he's yeah. moving again. <laughs> this is such a good podcast. <laughs> I'm just. I'm gonna. Oh. Uh. Anyway, I'm also thinking about. <laughs> And now Will's back. <laughs> I'm thinking about like, uh, like I am someone who is a self-taught drummer. I was right. playing drums with you all. And I'm not sure if when you invited me to this, you expected me to do that. Um, to play drums? Yes. I think that was what I wanted, yes. But I also wanted okay. you to have the freedom to, you know, do what, whatever you like. I feel like I have less of a reputation as a drummer in Iowa City than I did from the town I'm from, Mm -hmm. uh, which is, you know, but like, I don't know, just like the system of rock drumming in relation to what you were talking about in Plunder Phonics. I mean, it's like the same fucking four drum beats make up most rock and rock music. Yeah. Um, Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so I don't know. I think that's really interesting and like... Um, my musical background in relation to like sampling and stuff. It's just like all we're doing, it, like all I'm doing is like learning how to copy things I like to the best of my abilities. Yeah, and that seems to be more uh, commonly accepted in like drumming because yeah. that's like obviously there's only so many patterns that are going to come about in uh, in a yeah. certain genre so you're going to be just repeating something else and it, it could deal with like the culture of like copyright too like the almond break drummer made mm-hmm. like five thousand dollars off that beat and it's because a gofundme was made in like the <laughs> 2000s for him right like um and yeah, yeah and like, almond break is in a million recordings now <laughs> well i mean i mean it's interesting what you're i mean because you're right jake but then also drums have been kind of at the heart of, of, of course, the one we just mentioned. And then like, and I'm thinking about like Bernard Purdy, like, I mean, drums have been like at the heart of like every single public conversation that's been had about like the, you know, how, how do we think about sampling? Like, how do we think about like IP rights and music? I don't know. So that's, I don't, yeah, that's just like a, an interesting tension or something. Yeah, it's but it's like unless I'm right unless I'm writing like a rock drumming book, like I can't like copyright this beat that I wrote for you know even for my bands I can't like send the sheet. I'm pretty sure I can't just be like this is my drum melody. <laughs> um, it's just it's I don't know. I don't spend a lot of time thinking about this kind of stuff in relation to drums, frankly. Well, but. yeah, and really. You can we can get away with just not thinking about copyright most of the time at this point because yeah there's just mm-hmm. too much going on for anyone to actually be punished <laughs> for any violations. Well, yeah, it's like how uh, I think about my taxes too. It's like <laughs> <laughs> maybe that was you dangerous know, to say on air. <laughs> I almost referenced another podcast and this podcast, and I won't. But um, yeah, I I don't know as as folks of the avant-garde i mean i'm just used to like no one is going to care yeah if i break a law with my work like well yeah very few people are going to hear this at all (laughs) uh it's not going to make any money so who's even going to know about it to get mad about it purists elitists i i I... (laughs) 
we'll find out you know on april 15th <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean i i don't think that our set was particularly sample heavy but there is a little bit of like classical music coming through the radio but i was also just like wrecking it with a pitch shifting effect so it's not recognizable at all however the thing is even if a sample is unrecognizable if you haven't cleared it that is still technically illegal it's just that no one can do anything about it if they can't recognize it i do remember hearing in copyright law like this came up in like theory four because we were talking about girl talk Mm -hmm. that there is a certain time limit that you're allowed to sample where it doesn't it kind of de- it kind of depends it, right? on like what you what it's being used for like if it's a review of that like piece of music or whatever it's like 15 seconds or something like that but i think in girl talks case it's like that's just straight up a violation no matter how long the sample is i believe so but no one has ever taken any action against girl talk as far as i know which is interesting because that's pretty prominent like well-known music all right time to take the lsat and get into copyright law (laughs) it's been a long time since i actually like did any research on copyright law because i got to a point where it was like oh it doesn't matter (laughs) like <laughs> yeah i i had to take a music business class at one point um and i can tell you that i did not pay a single fucking attention in that class because it was so fucking boring <laughs> <laughs> like we literally reviewed one of drake's contracts from the mid 2000s and just like read it yeah and for an album contract, it was just like, I will never need this information. <laughs> this will n- never come across my desk. I, I have to admit, <laughs> I'd be really curious to see a document like that, just because I think whatever I'm imagining, it's probably like just so much more insane. Even like just yeah, the money that's involved, right? Yeah. Like whatever like bizarre like demands parties have of each other. I mean, I probably would satisfy that interest within like 30 seconds of looking at the document. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I, as a 19 year old DIY punk stoner kid, I was just like, this is so fucking boring. (laughs) (laughs) It's funny that you had to take a music business class. I I certainly never did. Yeah. I've got a couple degrees in music and never had to do anything like that. (laughs) Well, so my first year of education, I was a contemporary drum performance major at a rock and roll school where you earn technical degrees. Okay. Um, yeah, that makes more o- sense. In Oklahoma City called ACM, and I hated it. I, yeah. I feel like my degrees are kind of like the opposite of a technical degree. Yeah. Like, I, I learned a lot of stuff that I liked, but it has no practical application in real life. <laughs> Well, what was your? We don't. I, do we want to just talk about academia? Sure. Let me just ask. <laughs> Let me gauge the room. Will is like, look, your eyes are screaming right well, now. <laughs> well, I think I think Jake and Will as, are in very interesting as, uh, yeah, points ahead. points in your academic careers. Will, you just turned in your uh, dissertation, right? Yeah, I defend. You know, the, yeah this this time. And, uh, this hold on, maybe. <laughs> yeah. A week from now, I will I will be a doctor. Yeah, presumably. I'm not too worried. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'm, Jake... I'm like, it really, it really feels like in order to not get your degree in the fields that Will and I are in, you have to just like not show up or not turn anything in. Um, and I say that because there is such a culture of mediocrity in academia. Um, and I say that knowing that if, for example, the program were to deny Will his DMA, it would make the program look bad <laughs> and it would be a lot of work for the committee. It would be more work to deny us our degrees and would just it just makes the program look bad. Then you have to explain to administrators how you funded a grad student for three years and they didn't graduate. <laughs> um, like, how what is the return on investment um, for that? 
it's a lot easier to just make sure to just pass people even if yeah. they totally suck. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it sucks. Let's go down the list. That's definitely not me. That's not me, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Will and I are fucking cool, but all these other fucking losers <laughs> are skating by. Let's list them um, by name. Who sucks in each of your fields? Don't, uh, don't tempt me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And Jake, I, of course, you are almost done with your MFA. Or are you just yeah. basically completely done? I have to turn in a written thesis still. I haven't turned it in yet. Okay. I have to turn it in by the fit by tax day. Mm-hmm. The fifteenth is such a bullshit fucking day. That's tax day, right? I don't know. Not, I mean, yeah. historically, but it, the deadline has been. Oh yeah, they pushed, pushed it off. Yeah. Oh, that's cool because I don't want to. I have to do that, but the fifteenth is such an auspicious day that I'm dreading. But that's also the day I have to turn in my committee draft yeah Um, it's also the day that our video premieres it's the day that our video (laughs) premieres yes it's the day will and i are both in positions where we're strongly considering more of this hell (laughs) like more grad school um truly unhinged we are i mean it's yeah it's yeah yeah yeah. <laughs> um, I only did two years of grad school, and that was enough to keep me away. Yeah. I don't I know mean, how it's... Gabby feels, but Gabby also has a master's degree. <laughs> um, yeah, she's going back. <laughs> it's it fucking. I know she's considered it. She's going to do it. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I'm an intermediate MFA student at the University of Iowa. I like the program. I, I've I've really enjoyed being here. I like the drama. <laughs> there's been you know, plenty like, while you've been here. Yeah, there's been a lot for my program. Well, if, if you're still able to even say like half of that at the end of a degree, it's pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I don't have Real any talk. enemies for life amongst the faculty, <laughs> which I do have enemies for life from my undergrad <laughs> where it's on site. Like, Barb, if I see you, <laughs> I am going to fucking dunk on you so hard. I was going to say, let's go name by name. Uh, yeah, yeah, Barb. What's the story with hey, Barb? She just, uh, it was just mean to me. She taught sculpture in my undergrad. And like, I would, pres- I would be like, this is my work. And she'd be like, have you taken color theory yet? And I'd be like, yeah, I'm taking it right now. And she'd be like, yeah, it shows. There's that yeah, word I'm theory again. Theory yet. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, she was just rude. What did she... Tony Conrad say? <laughs> Have we not listened yeah. to his message? Color theory. The <laughs> enemy yeah. of people's color. Just everything she turned, <laughs> everything I turned in for crit, she would just literally laugh at and make fun of. And I'm literally getting an MFA in sculpture and intermedia. Yeah. Um. She was like an old... Acad- like an old art teacher a who got her degree. Yeah, a gatekeeper who is basically like anything conceptual is like uninteresting. It has to be like a very craft oriented professor mm. with very little patience or understanding for uh, weirdos <laughs> who are cool. <laughs> such as yourself. <laughs> uh, well, I wasn't going to say <laughs> it, but such as us. The unblessed rest of us, those of us who aren't just like <laughs> in, the, nice. in the in the craft cult. That's right. Mm-hmm. Um, which you know, I don't know. I'm in a music class this semester. It's weird. Which class yeah, is that? What do you What do you think about? It's Jean Francois, right? Mm. Yeah, I love Jean Francois. I love the class. I love the material. I mean, it's really physics heavy at times, which is like. I feel mm-hmm. like I'm in high school again and I haven't slept the night before. I'm like, okay, I didn't hear that last sentence, so I just cannot pick this back <laughs> up. But uh, Well, he's got a I French mean, accent too, so that might throw you off. No. <laughs> I I have no problem understanding John Francois. I love it. Yeah, no, he's I, I he's will good. say like um I I don't like anyone in the class. <laughs> it makes it really difficult. <laughs> I'm sure they're great. I'm sure they're nice. I'm sure they make Love interesting it. work. Let's go name like, by name. Uh, I can't remember their names. <laughs> you um, don't like them that much that they're nameless. It's just to you. like they're so elitist. It's just they're so their noses are so pushed high up onto their foreheads. You know, you'll it's encounter like, that in music school. Yeah, it's pretty weak. It's pretty fucking weak. I've been guilty uh, of that myself, but I. 
Ex- I'm I excised of it in all the of arts. that from my soul. I had to. Mm. Hopefully, I had to crit. <laughs> I had to crit. I had to crit this week where I had to tell a colleague that um, her work. She's trying to make swords that reference saints. Um, like Catholic saints. What so anime trying... is that from? <laughs> that is ex- exactly what I was like. Why aren't we talking about anime? Because all of these swords look like anime swords. <laughs> and finally, I like got the balls to say at the end of Crit, like, so if I just walked into a gallery and saw these, like, they look like they're from She-Ra. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Hell yeah. <laughs> I don't. I would never in a million years think they were about religion. Um, I mean, also... which... Shira rules, like right? She-Ra's like, cool. yeah, I think there's. I some thought you were going to say it's creator. like one of those. Like we walk into like a China bazaar, like that's what they're called. I'm not like describing it that way, <laughs> like at a strip mall where it's just yeah. like, but you know, you can get like, if you buy six swords, the next six are free. Like <laughs> wall scrolls. <laughs> where are you from? Where I can go there and get that? Because I will take you to Gatlinburg, Tennessee. <laughs> The, the biggest pigeon forge in the world oh yeah i think they might have something i don't know if how, they do, have we, how do we feel about there. doxing people on this interview <laughs> who, who are they <laughs> can i screen share can i screen share uh yeah if it's too sensitive i can edit it out later no this is this is public information okay that's the problem with doxing isn't it <laughs> <laughs> that it's public or yeah if it's public yeah. information yeah, i don't then... really consider it doxing that's and if true. it's a that's business, true. I feel like that's just advertisement. Not are doxing. you doxing someone cool or not cool? Not cool. Doxing. And it's not really doxing. Um, it's in the public domain. Well, Justin, if you, can you turn on screen sharing? Oh, uh, I didn't. Uh, where do you turn that on and off? I didn't um, realize. So you should see like a little security thing. If you go to Bottom. the share screen, there should be like a little. Okay. Yep. There you go. Hamburger menu. Yeah. Should uh, be. Cut, uh, trigger, now. trigger warning, Jake. No! <laughs> oh I my hate god, her dude. So much. <laughs> Wasn't this who you're just talking about? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> we'll just look them up. Let's look at their look at her work. Look at her work. Good her Military website. Military background. Yeah. Good Military background. So th- this Good is uh, this is Barb that Jake was talking about a minute ago. I hate her. For those she of was, you who are not watching. This person I, was mean to Jake I was and therefore so polite. I tried so hard. I was like Barb, I spend more time on this class than any other class. Like, I have a C. Like, I don't understand. I'm working so hard. How can I get a good grade in this class? That you just be like, I don't really think you're trying that hard. <laughs> <laughs> like, is that her what? phone number up there? <laughs> <laughs> Top right. <laughs> Let's shoot her a text. Completely yeah. unprofessional. That rules. <laughs> I'm glad you told me that. I'm glad I know that I just have access to her cell phone number. Hmm. Uh, hmm. Shallow and pedantic. <laughs> uh, for uh, derivative, I think that's a very insulting thing to say about art. <laughs> I'm just like I'm looking at this and I'm thinking, why should I care? Well, that dog thing was kind of cool because it's a dog, but I don't know. Look, it has a little butt crack. That's almost like <laughs> a Jim Henson thing. Yeah, it's Jim Henson. Yeah. No, she does a lot of these clay. They're made of clay and it's a thing. It's not as bad as I remember. I remember her work being terrible. <laughs> well, Gabby's mic is falling down. Uh, hold on. <laughs> See, this uh, the old flaccid mic. You know, we were just talking about swords, Will, and I got to tell you, I was really excited because I thought you were going to be like. Okay, this is this person's house named Dan. Dan stole one of my swords <laughs> at one point. <laughs> like, here's his address. And... Well, if we're going to go that route, the first thing I think of is Victor, who in the fifth grade stole my Pokemon Blue, and I will never forgive that motherfucker. Like the game? Yeah. Wow. A blue version. The game. I stole it. Oh, that's sad. If you listen to this, sad, Victor, Bill. I have not forgotten. You're a piece of shit. <laughs> That makes me sad. Man, I can't think of anything like that, really. Well, my friend stole... Okay, so I had... Um, were anybody else into Legos in the mid-late 90s? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Do you remember the ones that were kind of like uh, knockoff Indiana Jones? Yes. So there was one of those sets that I had that had like a little ruby piece. 
that I thought was very cool because it's like transparent red plastic. It's very unique among my Lego collection. So that was like my favorite like three centimeter piece of plastic that I had in my possession. And one day my best friend stole it from me. But I got it back. So it's not like Will's story really. We patched things up, but I I was upset briefly. Like the thing is, like Victor and I like weren't even my homies. I just was like too nice for my own good, and yeah, he had oh, never I've played Pokemon, there. so I let him borrow my blue version. Aww, I and that's uh, when I and and I haven't been nice to anybody since. <laughs> <laughs> I had a neighbor steal my flashlight. <laughs> oh, Jesus! <laughs> <laughs> you want to hear that story? Yes, please. This was like five or six years ago, back when I was still drinking, and uh, I'd had a little. I had some sips. I'd had a little sippy sip, and when I was ordering my flashlight, uh, I accidentally put in my neighbor's address. Uh, I put okay. in. I put in the wrong num- series of numbers. Right, as you do. Um, mm-hmm. And I was living with my mom at the time also. <laughs> and I was at my university job sitting in an office uh, doing nothing because that's what you do as a student worker. Mm-hmm. And I got the email that said my package had been delivered. So I called my mom to be like, hey, I got a package. Can you bring it inside for me? And she was like, I don't see anything. And I was like, okay, suspicious. So I double check and I saw that. And I was like, oh, it got delivered to the to our neighbor's house. And my mom was like, oh, I'll go ask them for it. Uh, And so my mom went down the street and asked our neighbor for it. And he was like, I don't know what you're talking about. (laughs) Um, But it had been delivered and UPS offered to do a formal investigation (laughs) to like, I don't know, break down his door and be like, where's the fucking light? Yeah. Like, give me. And I was, no, it's okay. Amazing. (laughs) Anyway. Those aren't cheap. Yeah, that was well. Uh, the company sent me a, a different one for free, oh, okay. which was cool. Okay. Um. So. Yeah. I mean, that's. I but, think that's a good ending because then you know two people have yeah. a masturbatory aid. Yeah, <laughs> and it was like the cool Avatar one too. So it's like. <laughs> <laughs> just kidding. <laughs> um, I was like, those are two words I don't often hear in the same sentence. <laughs> Unless we're talking Last Airbender. Yeah. Oh, my God. (laughs) Ah! (laughs) That's a different... Avatar Last Airbender flashlight. That's a different kind of bender. The amount of characters that cycled through my head when you said that, like, (laughs) Aang, Katara, Momo, Appa, like... No, I don't want to imagine any of them as flesh. I love that it was 50% not human. (laughs) This is, I think, by far the dirtiest episode of I Hear I See Radio, so you're welcome, Is this uncommon? Are we supposed to be talking about music? Uh, We can talk about whatever we want. You know how it goes. But it just, usually the conversation doesn't uh, go in this direction. But also very few of these haven't been live on the radio. So usually we're not even allowed to talk about this allowed stuff. To, yeah. I think you can say the words flashlight on the radio. <laughs> as someone working yeah, in yeah. radio. I think it's Probably. as long as it's as long as you don't say fuck light mm-hmm. or um please go buy a flashlight. <laughs> <laughs> but here we can say that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean I will give you my review. Too much work. It was okay. It was a novelty. Mm, interesting. Yeah, I mean, it was, it was fun for, you know, first few times, but... Is it the cleanup that's too much work, or is the whole thing the too much work? You know, there's just, like, quite a bit of shame when you <laughs> are doing something like that, and then you have to clean it, and it's, like, so fucking big, and, <laughs> like, it's... Because it's pretty big. I mean, it's, you know, it's a it's a tool. Um... <laughs> Yeah, I suppose that's, uh, I, you know what, I'll confess, I've never encountered one of these in real life, so what kind of weight are we talking? How heavy is this thing? Okay, so if it's in its case, it's like, it feels like the same, the first thing I thought of was like a shake weight, 
Mm-hmm. Um, which probably doesn't I mean, help I you at all because you would have <laughs> also I'm endorsing a lot of products here that I've bought because I thought they'd be funny are we going to get sponsored is this the totally s- no, is no I hear no. I see have sponsors now I'm I'll, anti-sponsorship I'll stop, saying, I'll stop saying products so the shakeable weight <laughs> is um, about the same weight as a pocket pussy um, and that's a weight so I imagine it is a little bit heavier it's if I threw it at you really hard, it would hurt, but it wouldn't knock you out. Okay. I don't think you could kill someone with a flashlight. Um, because it's just plastic. Mm. Um, <laughs> at least the one I got, and I got. I bet somebody in Florida one. has been killed with a flashlight. I will say that what brought me the most joy in my memories of briefly owning one because I threw it away after like a month. Um. Because it got disgusting. I'm just kidding. No, I, 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 <laughs> you can like, in order to clean it, you like take it out of the plastic thing, and it's just like this silicone fucking alien looking thing. And you can like, okay, for the Patreon subscribers, if you like do this with it in your hand, it makes like a really funny sound, and the quality of it flanging back and forth <laughs> is like really satisfying. Like I think. <laughs> I think that part of the flashlight is like a very good tool for people like me who have to fidget with things. Um, it has like a nice texture. It's very uncomfortable to stick your finger inside where the where the penis goes because it's uncomfortably soft. It just feels inappropriate, <laughs> right? To do that. I mean, that sounds very physically comfortable, but it's more like a mental discomfort. It's just like. You, I don't know. I, it just doesn't. It feels wrong. <laughs> it feels naughty. I don't know how else to describe it. We can stop talking about this now if you'd like. Gabby, um, Gabby looks a little bit scandalized. By all I'm trying this. to read the room. I'm sorry. It's, no, I, I love I'm not it. used to I talking to people because of COVID. Yeah, we've been um, we've been separated. I know this is a podcast. I'm just trying to be entertaining. This isn't the real me. <laughs> this is a character. <laughs> This is parody. <laughs> um, this is actually yeah. Jake Jacobs that we're talking about. <laughs> yeah, this is Jake Jacobs. Um, well, let's. Uh, so you are almost done with your MFA. And in addition to the video at Gabe's, we also did a performance at an MFA show that you did last month. And yeah, I'm curious, like, what uh, what was your conception of that show prior to our involvement? Well, I had known since I started planning things that I wanted to bring in people to play those things with me, um, and that I didn't want to be the the uh, person playing, getting to play with all the toys, so to speak. Mm-hmm. Um, the flashlight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I didn't want it to be a masturbatory experience. <laughs> I wanted it to be more of like a group sex polyamory sort of thing. Absolutely. Yep. Um, so I thought of some of my hottest friends, which are <laughs> you three. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, I mean, but I say all that in jest, but like in my thesis, I'm writing about how like the relationships between body object and instrument. And I mean, like it's such a dumb thing to say for us perhaps but to just like illustrate it as simply as possible like where i'm coming from conceptually is the space of like if i grab a guitar i'm grabbing the head neck or body right yeah and like Mm -hmm. i'm really interested in that um and like thinking about like like when i think about the performance and like the performances i've done in the past i'm not thinking so much of like these are human performers in the space, but they're like part of a system mm-hmm. uh, at times becoming instrument, becoming object. Like the objects are becoming instruments or bodies or objects. Like I really like that there's um, like a bleed between all of those things or I like keeping those things as complicated as I can. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, for, I realize we're on a podcast. I'm talking to y'all who know what all the instruments are, so I'll explain it to the listeners. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. One of the instruments were 10 pairs of shoes, and each pair of shoes had a string and uh, an electromagnetic pickup, so a guitar pickup and like a tuning key. So you could tune these shoes. And as you can imagine, um, you can't really play it like a guitar. 
because a lot of the strings can't get very tight because shoes aren't as sturdy as wood. Yeah, yeah. But so there's that clear reference of body there. It's like their shoes, they're snailed into the wall. Um, I really like... Uh, I gave a public presentation of my sh- of the work that we did mm-hmm. a few weeks ago. Um, and in my talk, I say, I, I'm like talking about you all and my relationship to you all. And I'm always saying this because I know you, you all weren't there to experience it. But I do want to <laughs> give you, Justin, some credit. I did describe your performance with the shoes as virtuos. Like you played them as, uh, how do you say it? <laughs> Virtuosically? I almost said virtuatistically, which is not. <laughs> With an abundance of I, virtue. An abundance of virtue. I almost said that too, and I was like, I don't Virtuously. think that's correct. <laughs> yeah. Virtuous, yes. I, and I, when I'm reading the script, I'm saying the correct word. Right, yeah. <clears throat> no, but I mean, I, re- I really. I remember you really nailing it, Jake. Yeah. I missed the presentation, so I'm glad to hear this uh, recap. Yeah, no worries. Uh, it was a. It was fun. It was good. It was very um, good. But uh, uh, the other th- another instrument. It was like a two string guitar made out of a baby cradle. Um, and so, and it also has a mirror in it. So it's like it's reflecting the world. So like, how could that? It's referencing a body. It's literally reflecting the world around it. If you're playing it, it could be reflecting the performer. Mm-hmm. Um, like I'm really interested in those things, um, and so I I don't know. I just really appreciate y'all coming into that space and bringing your in, your own instruments and your own like experiences and everything, and really just like killing it with very little micromanagement or direction on my part. Right. Yeah. Um, we didn't really talk a whole lot about it before we just did it. So. Uh, it's interesting to hear the like what you were conceiving of with the connection between human bodies and everything. Because we, yeah, we didn't even discuss that. <laughs> no, <laughs> before we did it, I was too tired <laughs> yeah. that week to to, and and also I know I know you all, right? Like I I knew that we could have had those conversations, but I also um like that I just put faith and trust into some people I know mm-hmm. and it paid off. Yeah. And that's largely what I was doing with the gaze performance too. Cause we didn't discuss much prior to that either. It's entirely yeah. improvised and like I've played with all of you in, in various settings. So like, I know that we, mm-hmm. we vibe, so I don't need to For, worry too much about it. <laughs> yeah. I, one thing that I know, I, I'm sorry. I feel like I'm talking a lot, but I just wanted, I want to say this thing, which is like, we didn't talk about the performance, but I think the for me the performance was really special, and my experience of it was a very beautiful one. And I think that was like, although we didn't talk about anything, your dedication at the beginning, Justin, and like having spoken to you about this person in your life that you were dedicating the performance oh, to, yeah, I was surprised by that. And when you said that, like suddenly, like there was a lot to do Mm. it as soon as that happened this was no longer just like okay i'm gonna deep listen i'm gonna (laughs) respond and improvise it like suddenly like there was like a clear emotional tone and objective and like an honoring and like i don't know that person we haven't spoken that much about it but it's like i have known love and loss and friendship and 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 like that if you ask me conceptually, you know, what were we doing? What was it about? It's like, that's where I was coming from and in, in responding to. Wow. I don't know. I thought that was really important and beautiful. Wow. I appreciate that. Cause I, yeah, again, like I haven't, uh, I didn't talk about it much with you guys. It was like, do you guys mind if I dedicate this to my friend before we start? And you were all like, cool. <laughs> So that's that was in my head, obviously, but I I'm glad that it uh, translated into Jake's head as well. I had a tiny I had a tiny bit of context just from seeing some stuff that you had posted on Facebook. Um, so when you when you asked that, like I kind of was able to like get on that wavelength too. Yeah, and you know, like I hadn't uh, done 
really anything for a year. So like the first thing I do, I have to like acknowledge the worst thing <laughs> that happened to me in that year away. <laughs> and also an interesting note, uh, Jake's MFA show was exactly one year after God. Jake's MFA show from like, from last year, which was the last thing I did in public in 2020. Yeah, so my MA show, my MFA show, okay, yeah, yeah. the same date, like week, like the second week of March. Um, and I both times have no Insane. control over that. They just put all of our names in a hat and pull it out and are like, which gallery do you want? Like, this is your week. Um, yeah, and that, yeah, the, the, the book ending of COVID with those two things, because now I'm fully vaccinated. Mm hmm. Um, it's, I mean, it will be two weeks on Monday and then I can get back to, um, licking doorknobs and, um, I don't know. <laughs> that's, I had, I swear I had a list of things I've been waiting to do. Well, that's group sex. obviously the most important is the. Yeah. Group sex. Mm -hmm. LARPing. I can go back to my LARPing. <laughs> um, I've been thinking a lot about LARPing. <laughs> if only we knew somewhere to get a lot of swords. <laughs> Yes. Uh, I'm getting my first Vax dose tomorrow. Oh, okay. lots of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, c congratulations. I Will, you're all done, right? You're all good? No, my second one is coming up in like a little less than two weeks. Oh, I thought your first was like a while ago. My perception I mean, of time is... Two weeks? Yeah. Two months? Two decades? <laughs> you got vaccinated before we even knew about covid <laughs> gabby are you are you second dose at all? on will's birthday okay nice that's all nice. that's all i could have asked for oh yeah it was all for you yeah that's what i'm looking forward to will <laughs> after being vaxxed is feeling uh comfortable seeing my friends yeah seriously yeah real talk i'll wear my mask but i know that if I'm making a silly face. I can take it off for a second. <laughs> right. Yeah. I never, despite but like once we're all fully ready to go, like, yeah, it's, we're, it, we're in business. I mean, I feel like basically it's, it's, it's you three plus like three or four other people, you know, that are kind of like the, like my, like Iowa city, like crew right now. Yeah. And like everybody is at least had one. I mean, like, I think, I'm just imagining a reality in which anybody that I actually want to hang out with, like by the time we're in May, we're going to be like fully vaxxed and can like actually hang. Yeah. That's, it's, it's wild. <laughs> yeah. After a full year of, uh, never seeing anyone. Uh, well now that we're on the subject of the future though, I, so Jake and Will are completing their degrees. So I imagine they're probably leaving me soon. <laughs> I don't know about Will. I think Will and I might be in the same boat of like, I won't fucking know until like June. Yeah, I didn't think you had any concrete plans. <laughs> like, but, uh... I like it's, I have technically, uh, I think, Will, you've already had to respond to a program and I have to respond to a mm -hmm. program on the 15th. Yeah. Um, but it's not like we're going to go to jail or our reputations would be ruined if we bailed on them <laughs> like in August. <laughs> Um, so I don't know. There's a, a part of me, I think actually it's very likely that I would stay in Iowa city an additional year. Okay, cool. Um, I've been accepted to a PhD program, but I've gotten a lot of bad vibes from them and I'm not sure if I want to like live in poverty for another five years. Mm -hmm. I say as if not well, going to a PhD program, I would like <laughs> suddenly be lifted out of poverty. You may not have a choice. Yes. <laughs> magical job <laughs> that will, I will suddenly have. Yeah. But yeah, uh, uh, we can, I kind of want to stay. We can probably get you like some production gigs, but uh, <laughs> those, <laughs> Oh, that would be sick. Those aren't like yeah. incredible pay or anything. <laughs> Y'all. So we're going on tour, right? If we're going to talk about the future, the reason we're talking I, about touring. The reason I brought it up is we've discussed it a little bit, but I think we should probably record something at least in addition to yeah. what we've already done uh oh, jake is that is your uh presentation of your mfa show like available anywhere 
Um, I have an audio recording. Um, I'm going to do another version of it that's just a video. Mm. Um, and it will probably include the Q&A from the live event. Okay, cool. But I'm a fucking ding dong. Send me to the bell factory, y'all, because <laughs> I'm a ding dong. I forgot to hit record on my Zoom call. <laughs> Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I was so, I was broadcasting on the radio yeah. and over Zuna at the same time. I was like trying to make sure I'm doing, it was a lot. Yeah. I yeah. needed a Roz. I needed. That we a, all. A, an absolute, God, what I would do for Roz. <laughs> But we've got yeah. documentation of that show. We've got this uh, no touching video coming out on the fifteenth. I think mm-hmm. we should probably record something. We've talked about it already, but uh, we've got a sp- we've got a space available to us that <laughs> we could. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> probably record stuff. My out. basement. Yeah. Yes. The music yeah. building. I said a the space. Music, I didn't name building. it. <laughs> S- space is a secret. <laughs> Definitely a secret space. Also, um, also, also, <laughs> Justin, if you want, you can uh, publish the live recording of us playing that I put on YouTube. It's an oh, right. unlisted right. YouTube link. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I can provide you with a copy of it or just give you that link so you can link to it on your page. Yeah, I know. I've, I know I've got the link somewhere. So, yeah, I'll, I'll use that, too. Oh, Jake, is that the one you shared with us? Like the kind of like super cut? Of the yeah, the super cut. Oh, yeah. great. Okay. I, haven't, I haven't made a longer cut yet. Gotcha. Um, I was wondering. I also if... have audio from all that, so we could publish cool. like a live. Um, well, if if whatever. and when, like whatever you like decide to like actually like really make public, you know, I certainly want to know so I can boost share. Yeah. All of that Thank you. nonsense. That's why I want to stay in Iowa City for a year because I just have all this unpublished material. <laughs> Um, you know, like my D and D campaigns that I've been writing, um, my, uh, zines about how I'm arguing that different members of the replacements are trans. <laughs> um, that's really important to me. And I'd love to find publishers for that material, <laughs> which I realize we've been recording for over an hour, but Justin, if you'd like to have me on to talk about how Paul Westerberg is trans, like let's fucking go deep dive. Yeah, into we the can replacements do that catalog because <laughs> someone needs to really like. I really think Paul Westerberg needs a friend to tell him it's okay if they want. You know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's set if up he, a time if, and we can. You can. School if he's me ever on this. thought about it, because I'm, I'm he, as a trans person, I hear his songs and I'm just like, like this is very relatable. Yeah, Inv- you, invite, you invite Paul to the show. God. Anyone have a line on this person? <laughs> Contact info? Uh, yeah, we have been recording for over an hour, and we've been getting into sort of pluggy territory. Do we have anything else that we would like the listeners of I Hear I See Radio to be aware of? Gabby, oh my ears, That's tell true. the people. Oh yeah, so April 17th at an hour that is a little bit obscene. <laughs> You're at the late show, right? I'm at the late show, yeah. which is kind of annoying, but I'm also closing it out. So I uh, did some stuff with bassoon and amplitude uh, affected lights uh, oh, at yeah. a very secret location. I've so, seen previews of this, and it looks very cool. So yeah, if y'all want to watch it, that would be pretty rad. Um, that's like my big plug. My other like pseudo plug is... I got offered a trash bassoon for three hundred dollars. I'm trying to decide if I should buy it. So yes, what would you yes. do with it? So, Fucking buy it. So, I will buy it for you. Fucking buy it. <laughs> <laughs> so originally, back in January, I rented a contra bassoon in like a manic episode, and then that like was supposed to be like an album, but it turned out to be too. I, the amount I my material was too short. Okay. Uh, so now I'm like, I need to make this into a bigger pro- project. And so all of a sudden it turned into like, what can rot become? What if I just like started like destroying, like actually rotting a bassoon mm-hmm. and like turning it into something else and like going into the woods and <laughs> so things that I don't want to do with my $30,000 instrument. Yeah. You know? It would be a bigger statement if you did, but uh, I, <laughs> we don't have I'm not that, that kind of, kind of girl. Yeah. <laughs> 
But if you want to, like, donate $300 to me to buy this trash bassoon, that plays is right, the other that's part. The, the important part, yeah, does it play? So, or but does yeah. it need to play? Aren't you going to grow shit in it? I was going to grow shit in it, but I like the idea of being able to drill holes and, like, try and do weird amplification with it that I can't do on my instrument. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So, like, to even be able to play with it before I, like, decompose it mm-hmm. uh, would be kind of rad. But yes, oh, my ears, please watch and support the arts. Wombat is making a guest appearance, as is the Carlos uh, experience. Uh, Picard and Picard, I believe, is Carlos's <laughs> duo's name. Yeah, with Jeff Young. Yeah. Uh, yeah, now we're talking about Oh My Ears. So, uh, yeah, Gabby, you're on the 17th. Mm-hmm. Uh, I believe that show begins at 9.30 p.m. Uh, Phoenix Pacific. time, so Pacific. Ooh. Is it Pacific or Mountain? Because they say both on their website, so I have no idea. I think Phoenix is in Pacific. Okay. Yeah. But it's 9.30 Pacific, which means it's 11.30, 11.30 p.m. is the start just time like her, it's for like, this just show. It's like a real here. show. It's like a <laughs> real show. Yeah. And the 17th, that's a <laughs> that's a Saturday. You can do that. You can stay yeah. up late for that. Uh, I'll include a link to that show that Gabby's playing at. And then Will and I, so in addition to this uh, No Touching video on the 15th, which will be streaming live at 8 p.m. Central Time, Will and I are also playing with Wombat in Phoenix at Oh My Ears. <laughs> uh, and that show is also on the 15th. Do you remember the start time for that, Will? Nope. It's definitely <laughs> earlier than Gabby's show. <laughs> I have no idea. Anything. In, in fact, I think it starts before the no touching thing, but I'll include a link Ooh. to that as well. And of course, our good friend Carlos is playing in Wombat with us. We have a series of three videos that we recorded together that will be premiering at Oh My Ears. And then later in the exact same show, Carlos is playing again with the duo that we just mentioned. (laughs) (laughs) Is there anything else at Oh My Ears that we should plug or should we not plug it? I will not be playing. Okay. (laughs) Oh My Ears, I'm boycotting. (laughs) Yeah. Them for not inviting me or (laughs) because I didn't apply or whatever. I don't know anything about this. It's something that we played last year. It was one of the the final things. Yeah. The, the month leading up to the end of it all. Jake, do you We're have any coming back? We are. We are rising from the tomb. Jake, do you have anything you would like our listeners to engage with following this? Engage with me. My Instagram <laughs> is at Jake Jacobs, Jake Jacobs. Um, feel free to reach out. That's all. I I don't have anything. If I do, I can't think of it right now. (laughs) Jake's very friendly. Follow Jake on Instagram and check out. uh, Is it is it your full name? The website. Yeah, it's (laughs) jacobharrisonjones.com. It hasn't Mm -hmm. been updated in over a year. Mm. Um, Well, this is the year to not update it. Yeah, no kidding. Uh, on my website, you can find uh, bad documentation of some of my performances, and you can also find a list of every band I've been in with Bandcamp links, which mm-hmm. is pretty embarrassing. <laughs> it's good though to have all that documented. It's cool. Yeah, to be fully, yeah. you know, open like that. I'm out there, you can see how many bad math rock bands I've been in. <laughs> There's, it's more than three. <laughs> <laughs> that's my kind of math Greater Jake you want to be a, a death metal drummer for me so I can finally live my dreams I would love to but I don't play double pedal but I'm really good at single pedal I'm like a Zach Hill stand All right. so like, <laughs> as a young person I just like saw Zach Hill and Brian Chippendale and was like okay so I'll never do double pedal because they cannot do double pedal so I just won't do double pedal Okay. Um, but I've been in The last metal band I was in was with my very scary drug dealer in Oklahoma City. Um, (laughs) We mostly just, I bet you can guess how many shows we play. (laughs) (laughs) We just did a lot of other things. Tales all this time. Yeah. Like, hey, weed band, what if we played music with you? (laughs) That... Um, yeah, anyway. Yeah. It, it was called Black Welder. Is that a cool metal name? Yeah. Welder of Color, I think, is 
what it's supposed what? to be. Welder of color. <laughs> Welder of color, yep. yeah. Mm-hmm. It's the proper terminology. And uh, I think with that, we can probably <laughs> end tonight's episode of I Hear I See Radio. Thank you to the weather for cooperating and not shutting the electricity down at my house at the very least. May have interfered with Will's internet, but... <laughs> Sorry, everybody. But the show did happen and did not get shut down early. Uh, if you would like to find more material related to this, please visit IHearIC.com. You'll find every episode of this radio show and videos of just about every I Hear I See live show, which will hopefully start up again sometime by the end of this calendar year. I don't know. Playing it by ear, obviously. But that'll do it. Uh, if you want to see this video, patreon.com slash I Hear I See. If you don't want to see the video, thanks for listening anyway. Thanks. Bye.